STV, votre télé. PM News on STV, one headline, 20th May 2018, D-Day minus two. Final preparations are being done to ensure that Sunday is a success round Cameroon. Rehearsals have been conducted and much past ground brightly colored. Good evening and thanks for joining us in today's 8 p.m. complete English newscast on STV broadcasting live from Douala in Cameroon. The military and civilians have conducted final rehearsals for Sunday, May 20th, around the national territory. In Yaoundé, the exercise was under the watchful eyes of top government officials. John Paul Sama. Ahead of preparations for the 20th May celebrations in Yaoundé, the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense, Joseph Betty Asomo, alongside some close collaborators, watched with keen attention at the 20th May Boulevard in Yaoundé, a match pass rehearsal which saw honor given to the visiting Nigerian army. Closely followed by their Cameroonian counterparts, the presidential guards, firefighters, as well as retired soldiers, inclusive. This all under the watchful command of General Numa Joseph, the commander of the 12th Motorized Infantry Brigade. During the over four hours rehearsal, some instructions were dished out by General René Claude Mecca, like the respect of time as well as distance between them. The military march pass was closely followed by a civilian parade. The same exercise took place at La Vallée de la Beseke Match Pass Ground here in Douala. Peter Sossi has more. The finest elements of Cameroon's defense forces in Douala fine tuning matching skills ahead of the May 20 military parade. The Beseke ceremonial ground is the seat of the rehearsal Friday as a colony of the different military corps drawn from the police, National Gendarmerie, the Rapid Intervention Battalion B, Customs, Air Force, the Navy, firefighters as well as ex-servicemen marched past in different detachments in front of supervisors led by General Salim Muhammadu, commander of the 2nd Joint Military Region. Emphasis has been laid on the dexterity of the parade as every technical detail is taken into consideration. Marching steps, composition of blocks, personal hygiene and presentation, as well as uniformity. They are marching on a rhythm of 108 beats per minute. The motorized parade is also on the menu. After three rounds, the supervisor are satisfied with the conduct of the rehearsals but observe some loopholes. For the motorized parade, speed limit was not respected, the movements not uniform and drivers did not wear their seat belt, while the distance between blocks for foot marching soldiers was not even. General Salim Muhammadu stresses on the amelioration of these shortcomings, insisting that the troops must reflect their commanders in all aspects. 7.15 a.m. is the time for the military to assemble at the Beseke ceremonial ground on Sunday, May 20. It is on that note that the military leaves the grandstand 
and the civilian warehouse takes over where the ice are dotted and tea is crossed ahead of Sunday, May 20. In Boya, southwest region of Cameroon, the March Pass ground has been decorated and all is ready, as Clarice Sekowe tells us. Going by some historians, May 1972 was a significant date when Cameroonians decided to move from a federal state to a unitary state which 20 May established to commemorate National Day of Cameroon. Celebrating national unity has always been characterized with much enthusiasm from Cameroonians. However, with the recent Anglophone crisis rocking the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon, this year edition of the National Day celebrations has brought mixed feelings in the minds of many. In May 20, where people are being forced to participate, isn't for me the idea of celebrating National Unity, National Day. Right now, there are some serious questions being put about this question of national unity. And I think it is in our best interest to address those questions. When I look at it from the spiritual point of view, and I think that if you and I have a problem, there is no need for you and I to go and celebrating without coming back to resolve our problem, then we celebrate. See what Jesus himself said, that if you have a problem with your brother and you have an offering in your hand to give, leave your offering there, go and reconcile with your brother and then come back and give my offering and then it will be acceptable. We treated me fast approaching and Southwest region still faced with sociopolitical challenges. Religious leaders on Japan say intensifying fasting and prayers for the nation is very necessary. The Bible tells us that blessed is the nation whose God is their Lord. And then whenever we have any kind of a problem, we have to take it to God in prayer. So if our land is either politically or marginally sick, we only have to call up to God in prayer for God to help us out. While awaiting to celebrate the National Day, Many have challenged the head of state to hasten and initiate a frank and inclusive dialogue as a solution to the sociopolitical crisis hitting the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. 48 hours to National Day celebrations in Cameroon. The military in the Northwest Sea, they are ready to march on Sunday. Within about a month of intensive rehearsals, Northwest denizens have been observing Ghost Town since Monday. Lovett Berry reports. <laughs> set for the National Day coming up on Sunday, May 20th. The different defense forces in the Northwest region have undergone one month of intensive march pass rehearsals, giving in at least three hours a day, not being distracted by either the rain or the harsh sun. After several days of march pass rehearsals, commanded by Onambele Luis, who has been pointing out their mistakes, he now says the mistakes have all been corrected and they are now ready for the National Day. from the military is for them to appear in clean attires and the ladies should take note of their hair. You are ready. You start the rehearsal uh, since uh, maybe one month still now. So we are sure that uh, the day after tomorrow we will be ready. Now we are giving the, the instruction about the physical presentation so that our soldiers should be very clean and uh, even uh, women very uh, clear in their uh, uniform. The 46th edition of the National Day would be celebrated under the theme Cameroonian citizens let us remain united in diversity and preserve social peace for a stable, indivisible and prosperous Cameroon. 
Despite the preparations from the different defense forces, the mm. town still looks deserted following the ghost town that have been observed since Monday. Boya, southwest capital of the southwest region, has been attributed a rich historical background which makes it unforgettable. Honorable Eno Tanjong, first governor of the southwest province, says this must be preserved. Clarice Okora reports. Boya, headquarter of the southwest region, and former capital of German Cameroon remains an important historical destination as a pay host to some historical remnant. The German Prime Minister Lodge is one of such remnant which was constructed in 1902 and served as palace to Jesko von Putkama, German governor at the time. This old German structure also served as the German post office in 1902. The Bismarck Fountain, the National Archives Annex, remain other attractions highly visited by many, both nationals and internationals, as it presents the history of Cameroon in its unrefined form. Inaugurated by the head of state on the 19th of February 2014, this 50th reunification monument of Cameroon, situated in Boya, around the premises of the Southwest Governor, comes to add to the list of historical and tourist sites in Boya. Apart from this historical monument, Boya still boasts of some long-serving administrators in the light of Honorable Eno Tanjong, one-time governor of the Southwest Province, who gives a flashback on some historical happenings during his era. The Cameroonians of uh, East of the Mungo, having independence 1st January 1960, then of course within a year they discuss with their counterparts, with their uh, fellow Cameroonians of West of the Mungo for a country which they think they should have. Historians further throw light on other significant happenings as Professor Julius Ngo elaborates on the 1972 referendum. 1972 referendum was done according to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Cameroon. And the federal, the federal constitution was clear. Any revision of the constitution must get the approval of either the members of parliament or to a referendum. 46 years after reunification, the socio-political and economic developments in Boya cannot be overemphasized as effort made in the past Honorable Eno Tanjong says has gone so far and should be cherished despite the present difficulties faced in the country. Cameroonians have been receiving recognition medals during official ceremonies for services rendered to their country. But the procedure and who benefits from it has always been kept confidential. Peter Saucier tells us. The award of medals in Cameroon has become a regular feature during official ceremonies. Yet, the procedure, as well as who qualifies for it, remains a mystery. Far from popular conception that only civil servants and top state officials are eligible for medals, every Cameroonian who has worked for some time deserves one. This lady has been working for about 14 years as a maid. She received a civil and bronze labor medal at the last Labor Day in Douala. Labor medals are given based on recommendations from the employer or hierarchy and could be accumulated over time. The proposal is confidential. The case is different from chancellery medals, which follows some administrative procedures. Applicants must furnish a file which includes a certificate of non-conviction and the applicant must be of good morals. Medals are usually awarded based on the number of years in service, but exceptional works are also recognized. This is the case of sportsmen, authors and artists. At the presidency in charge of defense, Joseph Betty Asomo has opened to the public a three day open door event in Yaoundé where the military shows its prowess to the population. John Paul Samar reports. Symbolic cutting of the ribbon by defense boss Joseph Betty Asomo marked the official opening of the military open door day at the Yaoundé Air Base 101. This open door 
which will provide an opportunity for the various gendarmerie and elite corps to expose their know-how of the various sectors, be it air, land or sea, as well as presentation of the different professions, recruitment channels and career profiles in order to encourage the vocation. The minister delegates at the presidency in charge of defense was taken on a guided tour to the various stands where he assessed for himself the country's military prowess. Aside from their military skills, the men and women of the military corps also demonstrated their know-how in diverse disciplines like sewing, nursing, amongst others. During this open day at the 101 Air Base in Yaoundé, the stand dedicated to veterans and war victims was there to advise these defenders of the nation on the path to follow after their years of active service as well as ways of reintegrating into the society. The three-day open-door day of the military, which is also open to members of the entire public, closes its doors this Saturday. On to other news, members of PACOM, a program to enhance the competitiveness of Cameroon's economy, met in its seventh piloting committee session this Thursday, rather on Thursday, May 17, here in Douala. The gathering was a platform to evaluate implementations of resolutions of preview sessions and device strategies to empower small and medium-sized enterprises and make the country's economy more competitive. More in the following excerpts compiled by Darling the, the European Union, the, this, this program shows uh, the engagement the European Union has um, to support the uh, private sector in Cameroon. I think uh, this program is also very much related to the, the EPA, uh, the Economic Partnership Agreement, and can be seen as an accompanying measure of that agreement. And uh, I think uh, it uh, shows that the European Union recognizes the importance uh, the private sector plays in uh, fighting poverty and in uh, the, the competitiveness of Cameroon is kind of the basis of uh, economic development and that's where this program comes in and, and accompanies and supports uh, the Cameroon actors, both directly the private sector but also those uh, state institutions um, working with the private sector in um, uh, boosting uh, the competitiveness uh, here in Cameroon. The PACOM program, uh, we, 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 do, we do many things about the uh, PACOM program. We do profiling of, of SMEs, benchmarking. Uh, we also, we also uh, uh, find and search some opportunity to our small business enterprises. And so today we have uh, generated about um, 6,000 uh, job to our counterpart. Uh, also, uh, SMEs have granted uh, uh, about uh, around around six, uh, no, 40 billion francs from. In health, HIV and AIDS hospital health district heads in the littoral region have been schooled on the new methods of HIV and AIDS screening, that the index test testing. During the one-day workshop chaired by the health boss for the region, it was disclosed that the littoral alone has screened 95 persons, administered 95 others with antiretroviral drugs, and has 75% of ART and virally suppressed persons. This within the UNSAID program of 90-90-90. To combat the spread of the disease, participants were told to put into practice the IT method that does not end at the level of the AIDS patient but touches all those in contact with the person. Let's get more from the literal health delegate and the CBC health supervisor. As far as HIV is concerned, uh, the littoral region is uh, uh, under a situation where HIV is uh, still considered as a, a disease that should be under control. And the prevalence, although the prevalence is uh, going down, we need to develop some particular uh, strategies to just uh, be able to take in charge 
people suffering from that disease. This particular strategy is going to improve our uh, fighting against that disease uh, in the way that uh, generally when we, 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 we used to do testing in general population, with the, the prevalence we used to get, uh, even though they are very low, uh, we, we don't uh, particularly achieve the first 80% of people suffering from HIV. But by using this strategy, we intend to quickly reach the first 80% of people suffering of that disease so that they should be uh, taken in charge and be under treatment for that disease. Yes, yes, thing just means that Consider any HIV-infected patient who you have in front of you as an index case. That means somebody through whom you will try to reach all his sexual contacts or his family members. Because under index case testing, we have what we call contact tracing and family testing. We continue talking about health, but this time care of the mouth. Dentists see it is primordial to visit them at least once a month to keep our mouth safe. More in this report. The teeth used to chew and break is a vital instrument in the process of digestion. In the absence of one tooth, the mouth is affected. Taking care of the mouth is a lifelong activity that begins from birth. Taking care of the mouth starts from when the child is born. And when the child is born, um, first thing a woman needs to do in the first one year of life is to clean the mouth of the child with a small piece of cotton. Uh, the, what the, uh, usually the, what is done is that a piece of cotton is soaked in water and the gum is clean. Actually, what we call it in English, the gum part, you wipe it, and when the tooth starts erupting at the age of six months, the cotton is used for cleaning the mouth. As from six months, when the child's teeth begins to develop, a fluoride toothpaste is advised. Between six months and one year, Children toothpaste is used for brushing the, the mouth of the child. And normally, the most important thing in child brushing is uh, supervision from the parents. Because toothpaste actually, when the child swallows it, it can actually cause some other problems in the mouth, what we call fluorosis. Fluorosis is a medical or dental condition where the teeth loses its color and becomes very, very hard and becomes fragile and can actually break. Contrary to children, adults are not to rinse their mouths after brushing their teeth. Fluoride helps to secure the teeth. Dentists say one should brush at least twice a day after breakfast and before bedtime with good toothpaste and not abrasives. Studies show that limes and other acidic products, cigarettes, cola nuts, and alcohol destroy the gums. Reason why? It is appropriate to eat crunchy fruits and vegetables such as apples, pears, celery, and carrots, which produce saliva that protect the teeth. With the teeth not being protected, the end result is tooth decay. Tiny holes that develop in the hard surface area of the teeth. These could either be filled or removed. To avoid tooth sensitivity and decay, one is advised to adopt good eating habits, brush, Floss daily and do checkups regularly. 
In brief activities to mark the 30 years of existence of the association Main dans la Main is unfolding here in Douala. Yesterday, Thursday, a come together was organized at the St. Peter and Paul Cathedral at Bonadibon with focus on rights of children. Main, Main dans la Main, excuse me, is celebrating its 30th anniversary throughout this month of May. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOA. The stunning 14th century St. George's Chapel on the grounds of Windsor Castle, where Prince Harry was baptised and now the venue for his marriage to Meghan Markle. Some 600 guests have been invited, mainly those who have a direct relationship with the couple. In addition, more than 2,500 members of the public have been invited into the castle grounds, the prime spot, to watch the guests come and go. By allowing the public to come into the lower ward of, of Windsor Castle, to me that was surprising and it was very touching. Because for as much as they don't like the media intrusion, the royals, they've invited media in, they've invited the public in, and they're wanting to share the, the, their special day. Four members of the Mumbai-based charity Minor Mahila Foundation have been invited. The NGO provides sanitary products in the slums of the Indian city and was visited by Meghan Markle last year. It's one of seven charities to which the couple have asked guests to donate to instead of giving wedding presents. We are representing not just Mena but also the women across urban slums in the city and India as well. I think there's a lot on, um, on the plate and a lot of pressure. More than 100,000 people are expected to line the streets of Windsor. Many have arrived early to bag the best spots. Every little girl has read fairy tales from her, from her childhood on by her mother. And she always dreams of becoming a princess and living in a castle. And I mean, this is it. This is a real life fairy tale. In a break with tradition, the bride-to-be will not have a maid of honour. Harry's nephew, Prince George, will be a page boy, and niece, Princess Charlotte, a bridesmaid, alongside several members of Meghan Markle's family. In the kitchens of Windsor Castle, 30 chefs will prepare a banquet for the 600 reception guests. The couple were involved in, in uh, they tasted every, every Think they've uh, been into, in, involved in every detail. That could mean some American surprises among the British fair. Are we going to see hot dogs? Thousands of police officers are mounting one of the biggest security operations in recent years, paid for by the public, a bill some opposed to the monarchy resent. Supporters argue the wedding is likely to attract big spending by visitors and those watching in bars and big screens across the country. Millions are expected to tune in around the globe with the promise of British pomp mixed with plenty of Hollywood glamour. Henry Richwell for VOA News, London. It is with our VOA correspondence that we pull the curtains for today's newscast. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed weekend. STV, votre télé.